contemporary clarinet, but the clarinet itself, it's not an ancient instrument, but it's not a new instrument. No. It's fairly old. But it's asked to play new sounds in new mm. performance practices, like, uh, or relatively new, like flutter tonguing, yeah. key clicks, lip buzzing, and yeah. vocal sounds whilst playing. I'm sure you've yeah, done yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Is it getting more difficult to keep up with the demands of the contemporary composer for the clarinetist? I don't look upon it as difficult. I think it's brilliant. I think it's fantastic to, to be challenged. I'm not interested in just repeating things. It's just boring. I mean, for the life of me, I can't understand why clarinet players play Weber, for example. It just doesn't make any sense to me playing music that's 200 years old. I love the fact that composers will say to me, can you try your hand on the other side of the instrument? Can you take off the bell and bang it off the side? Great, why not? You know, uh, we've got to explore. Otherwise, we might as well go to a museum. So, you know. So, I mean, uh, yeah, there are difficulties. Recently, I've been trying to sing and play at the same time, and I found uh, there are certain intervals I can do quite successfully, like a fifth and a fourth, but once other intervals are quite tricky. So you just have to keep on working on that, you know? But I don't... I see that as great. I, I really think it's... And I think that's indicative of a new music player. They want to be challenged. They want to be creative in their approach to performance rather than just reheating. Just, I'm just not interested in reheating at all. Well, when you approach a piece, yeah. shall we say, and you, you're, you're finding your way into the process, yeah, perhaps sure. it help to inspire sure. the composer sure. and what you feel is coming off the, the score to you, yeah. the, would you build it, I mean, of course, it depends how difficult it is, but would you build it note by note or phrase by phrase or would you go would you bombard the composer with emails or phone calls uh, or? i personally am very keen on the whole idea of working together with composers with uh, collaborating with composers i think a score is one monodimensional way of communicating and if you meet somebody there's a much more visceral connection there's a much more you get the personality of the individual when you meet them when you hear them talk and when you see them gesture and I'm very keen on that. I know that can't always happen. And the composers I've worked with over the years, a lot of composers I've worked with, I actually know quite well. I know the sound world they have in mind. I know the degree to which they would like you to be very faithful and authentic to certain spots of the music and other bits where they don't mind a bit of give and take. And I think there's a huge amount to play for in that whole space. I don't think we, I think we as composers and performers should work together to be as creative in that space as possible, not set ourselves apart that this is my music, you play my music. I don't really, I think we should create music. It doesn't matter whose music it is, as long as it's good music. You, you, well, you do play a, a quite a lot. You are animated, Concord, Mm. Most of us have, have seen and heard Concord. Mm. Um, and you also commission a lot of new music, yeah. thank God. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> but but uh, are there any set criteria for Paul Rowe? For commissioned composers? Uh, I would go along with the thinking of the likes of Bang in the Can Group in New York and the likes of, say, the Kronos Quartet, where they commission specific composers that they know they can relate to. They have an understanding with it gets back to this whole idea of collaborating the composers i want to commission are composers that i like as human beings as people because i think the level of communication is going to be better therefore the type of music that you're going to create create together is going to have a spontaneity and a freshness about it so that would be a criteria for me um i also want to play music where i feel as i have something to say I don't want to play a piece of music where I feel I have to absolutely break my neck spending f 500 hours learning and when I play it I go, gosh, there's none of me and that, that's kind of, that's just hard work and, uh, you know, so I want, uh, I think they, to play music where there's a level of flexibility and there's a level of ambiguity, it, you know, where there's plenty of opportunity for the music to grow, the performances to grow, and they're not kind of nailed to, you played 40 there when you should have played piano, and I think that's, for me, that's just the death of creativity for a performer. It really is 
start drama? I think very much so. Very much so. Yeah, I think so. Uh, a composer once said to me, he said, um, actually, what a, what, a, what a performer wants is to get a really good script that he can do something with. I'm not sure that I 100% agree with it, but it's along that sort of lines. I think get, we have to move away from this 19th century kind of musicological ideal of this ideal, idealized perform, performance, you know. Uh, I think, don't think there is such a thing. I think, you know, otherwise you're just creating ready-made archives. It's got to be living, it's got to move on, you know. That's why the idea of me playing Mozart, playing Weber, yes I do it, I'm not saying I don't, and I do love it, but uh, it's not something I'll do as an ongoing kind of thing to feed my creative side of my musicianship, you know. Well Paul, here's to the future. Great. Thank you very, very much.